In October 1943, the Empress of Russia, the Atlantis, and the Dotting Home arrived in Britain from Sweden. On board were 4,290 repatriated prisoners of war. I came ashore like that almost three years ago. Thought I was finished because I'd lost an arm. I bet some of these boys are thinking the same thing too. Or if they're not, their wives are, and their mothers. It's only natural, I suppose. You think you're on the scrap heap. but the future holds something very different for these lads. I lost my leg in the blitz three years ago. So perhaps I can speak with some knowledge of what it means. At first, you really do feel that you're finished. But only if you're completely ignorant, as I was, of just what can be done. Once the worst part is over, the amputation, fitting the limb, walking on crutches, I set out to see what I could do. First thing I did was to throw away the crutches. I definitely didn't like them. Really, I was afraid that I shouldn't be able to look after the house and children anymore. I haven't found anything in the house that I can't tackle, just like I used to. Mom. Hello. What's up, Jenny, Mom? Now, come along. I'm busy. Out into the fresh air. That's right. Well, that's my experience. And I'm not the only one who's been pleasantly surprised. Watch this young couple. You've got something to learn from them. They're just another two among the thousands of people who've been knocked about a bit by the war. I had an accident whilst I was in the Navy and lost both my legs. I was the first double amputation case to come through in this war. I was going back to an RAF camp one night during the Blitz a couple of years ago when I woke up in hospital and they told me I'd lost a leg. I couldn't remember still wishing I'd been killed. That's what it's like at first. You think you're finished. Crutches and the wooden leg for the rest of your life. It doesn't stop me from going places. Yes, they work miracles these days. Of course, it isn't a miracle. Just that artificial limbs have been improved so much. To have an amputation below the knee, as that girl has, isn't really a handicap at all. And even with both legs amputated, like Petty Officer Young, you can still get about. you saw landing from the hospital ship, come here to the government hospital at Roehampton, where I was taken. They come in on crutches, and it's Roehampton's job to send them out under their own steam, ready to pick up their lives where they were interrupted. girl you saw at the dance. 
she's back at her old job. She can stand all day in the shop, as active as ever she was. There's hardly a job you can mention that she couldn't tackle successfully. Postman Banks lost his leg below the knee three weeks before the armistice in the last war. He's been delivering letters now for 20 years, and you can't be a postman in a country district without doing your share of walking. Jock Houston has worked as a leather craftsman for more than 20 years. He lost both legs below the knee in the last war, but he can operate a heavy treadle machine all day. Children too. Joan Crondon was only 11 when she lost her leg in the blitz. But she still has her games like any other child. She can jump and skip as naturally as the others and even take all her weight on the artificial limb. These cases have all been of amputations below the knee, where the knee joint can still be used in walking and bending. A thigh amputation isn't quite the same, but the modern artificial leg has a joint which can be locked or set at various tensions. You can sit down and stand quite naturally, and though you may have a bit of a limp, don't think that you won't get about like you used to. This boy was in a motorcycle accident. Now he has a job in a garage, and he can do everything that's required of him. Here's an electrician with a thigh amputation. He was wounded in Libya and lay in the desert for four days before a doctor could reach him. Before the war, he was a laborer. Since his discharge from the army, He's become a skilled workman. Driving a lorry isn't a particularly light job. This driver lost his leg above the knee, but he can still drive a lorry. You'd think the loss of two legs would put an end to an active life. Let those who are afraid for themselves or for those they love take courage from the example of Petty Officer Young still up and about. From little Joan. And my own case. I had a job, an ordinary job to do. Looking after my husband, my home, my children. I'm still doing it. You have seen how we can get back to normal by using artificial legs but what about people who have lost an arm? The technical inspector at Roehampton has something to say about that. They tell me that it is more of a disadvantage to lose an arm than a leg. That is probably true. But I know from personal experience that with the assistance of these artificial arms and the various appliances that go with them, it is possible to do a great deal in the way of manual labor. I suppose most of us feel when we have lost an arm that we are very dependent upon others. Well, let's see. I had my arm taken off above the elbow about three years ago at City Roseg. Takes a little getting used to, but I can wash, shave, dress myself, put this thing on without any help. Guess I can do most anything with a little practice, except play a piano. And we haven't got one anyway. But it's not enough just to fend for yourself in your own home. It's important, but it's important that you keep the home together. And that means doing a job. A lot of people, well-meaning people too, think that if you've only one arm, they've got to find you an easy job. Clerk, lift attendant.
At first, I thought they were right. But if you've been, say, uh, an engineer, what's wrong with the same job? I find that I can manage pretty well. And it's a simple matter for a government training center to give you the correct tools. If you've been a draftsman, well, you're still a draftsman. You've got the same skill that you had before. It's only a question of getting used to the new arm. Here's a man who's taken up carpentry. He was a sound instructor in the Royal Berkshires and lost his arm less than two years ago when some detonators exploded accidentally. Before the war, he was a fitter driver. Carpentry was completely new to him, but he tackled it and succeeded. Metal beating is another skilled job that can be done quite easily by a forearm case. And there's no time lost in changing tools. These are examples of amputations below the elbow, like this. The elbow joint can still be used and makes the operation of the arm fairly simple. But when the amputation is above the elbow, like mine is, it makes the operation of the limb a bit more difficult. The shoulders have to be brought into use by means of these straps. The arm is fully under control. It can be raised and lowered and used for grasping and holding. A little practice in the use of the arm and there are many jobs that can be performed with absolute efficiency. Here's another last war casualty who has only recently been trained as a painter and decorator. Before that he worked as a general laborer with an arm that was turned out in a smithy. Now he's been fitted up at a government training center. Even with two artificial arms, a man can still take his place as a skilled workman. And when the job's over for the day, well, what's your fancy? Tennis? Golf? Billiards? Table tennis? For me, it's some hard work in the garden. All these men and women came to us disabled. The state accepts responsibility for them. Anything that can be done toward the rehabilitation will be done. They can be fitted at Roehampton or any other government centre to return to their places in the community. But in the end, the responsibility rests with the community to accept them, to judge them not by their disabilities, but by their abilities.